Hey, how's it going? Good. But uh, I have some concerns about the tour, and I need to talk to you about it face to face. What the fuck is this? Uh, it's a little weird. This is weird even by music business standards. My girl's in a lot of trouble. You wanted to find a way into my life? You wanted me to hear your artists? I like them. Joss, there's something important that I need to talk to you about. Do you see this? You don't think people are capable of hiding who they really are? Episode four got deep into Jocelyn and Tedros working together on the music. So there's the romanticism of that, also the total darkness and the madness. The music that Jocelyn starts making as the show goes on is inextricably linked to what's happening with her and Tedros. You were right about this guy. He's a bad motherfucker. What we're realizing is that Jocelyn is well aware of who Tedros is. I'm an open book. The question is, what is she getting out of this? Bitches. He is bringing an honesty and a rawness out of her that I think she has not been able to access. Jocelyn is a very strategic and calculated person. She's getting what she needs, and what she needs is inspiration. We start to really see everyone's true colors. Everyone has something that they want. I just signed with Magistrate. Nikki wants me to have a world-class singer as my first single. It paints a really, really interesting picture about the industry and capitalizing on someone's art and their heart. Here's what we can offer you. It just is a really vulnerable and personal thing to make music. And so I think there's just this innate tension. OK, I mean, there's about three to five kids in here, crazy talented. I made a little demo of Crocodile Tears. It's like a loner anthem, I guess. I just sent it to Sam, and I was like, could this maybe be a Chloe song? And he said, yeah, let's use that. Let's play with that. Part of what we wanted to do and what we set out to do is to create a show that have its own self-contained universe of music. We started to assemble more and more musicians that are really exciting and bring an authenticity to this piece. Motherfucking Mike Dean. Mike Dean is a music producer who I've always admired. He is truly a musical genius. I wanted to bring in somebody that can really synthesize some of my ideas. Once I met him, I realized he was also absolutely hilarious. Beautiful house, but the acoustics are garbage. We're scoring this show downstairs in his spare room. Sam comes over, we'll just vibe out. You know, he loves to watch me make music and show me references while I'm working. Tangerine Dream, Black Sabbath, Night of the Living Dead. This whole project, it's all vintage synth. Overheim, CSAD, Jupiter 8, Moon Voyager. Every synth will make me do something different. It's pretty cool. The fourth day that I was working on the score, I just started playing those chords. Abel grabbed a mic and sang that melody. We had a 24-piece string section replay it all. Turned out to be the theme of the whole show. We created it live, basically. It was interesting to play with Jocelyn's music evolution. Maybe it's hard to see when you look at the earlier stuff felt a little bit more mechanical. There's a real switch when she meets Tedros. I'm just a freak here. You know I want it right. Music's killer. Vocally, it needs to be like the ah, uh, just more grit. More grit. Oh. What we were trying to get to was something that was a little bit darker, a little bit more aggressive into the pop music of Jocelyn. Ramsey was a really big influence on that. Fill the Void was kind of the first time in the season where she starts to really take control. Messing with this thing on the piano that's like... We started with the Ramsey track, trying new vocal effects. Super wet vocals, reverse backwards stuff. Real broken up distorted drums. 
It's a school trip is stuff. Dark, gothic trap. Jocelyn starts finding her own voice. I think it really shows in that song. She was so 